follow the wiki page so uh, yesterday me, myself and Christian updated the wiki page uh, with the our release uh, our goals for the for the next release and then we'll be following that uh, looking at the stuff you already did and the stuff we still need to do not all of them need to be done by the release so it's not so doesn't look so bad and then after we do that then we can go back and discuss uh, the points we are missing okay so the stuff we already did uh, for the interpreters we we were able to remove every bit of old shit from the archive so we now have only ruby 2.1 which is the latest upstream and i think we are really good for jesse uh, I, th I think the, the interpreter package itself is a lot better it's very it's I, I don't think there's any demo specific patch anymore i mean also upstream is a lot saving nowadays so that's good uh, we also made sure that the upgrades from Wizzy doesn't don't break because uh, on Wizzy we still allow people to change the default interpreter using uh, update alternatives, and that turns out to be very dangerous and very error So we removed the option to do that, and also uh, there are some uh, alternative technical measures on the Ruby defaults package to make sure that user being Ruby is always what we want it to be. So, and then the upgrade works, so we figure out how to make sure that even if you don't have the Ruby meta package and you have something that uses Ruby, when you upgrade you get the right packages in place and everything works. So that's done. On the packaging side, we just released about the interpreters at some point there was a discussion I think with Maga about uh, not forcing the removal of mm -hmm. this Ruby one point eight. Yeah that's that's done. Okay. So if you if you have Ruby one eight it's well it's not going to be removed behind your back. So it will stay there. Just won't work with anything provided by Debian anymore but it will stay there. Uh, I, I expect it will uh, it, it will go away later. No, it, it, it went away from the archive already. Yeah, yeah, it just oh. if you already. But you are, we're not completely. Yes, it yes, it will stay there if you have it. Makes sense. I mean, if you have it explicitly installed it and not as a that um, alternative dependency of Ruby meta package, mm -hmm. so it will just stay there. Uh, and so on the packaging side, we just released it. Uh, it, it was very nice work by uh, Cedric. Uh, integration with auto package tests. So all our packages now, uh, freshly created packages, have auto package test integration by default. And for new packages, it's very easy just running gh make ruby on the existing package and it will add the missing files. And uh, maybe we'll be able to run the auto package test for every package even without uh, new source uploads so i'm going to figure out how to do that with the auto package test maintainers so even though we want to do source uploads anyway to make sure that everything is in place we would be able to benefit from automated tests all the time fi more 500 packages for free so probably gonna do that and on the coordination side we both uh, tasks done by by Cedric so thank you very much Cedric if you are listening so we are having more or less monthly meetings on IRC for review progress and, and looking of looking over uh, painting stuff and discussing and that's very that's going that's being very helpful helpful we also had a team sprint in uh, January in Paris, very nice as well. It was uh, co-located with the Paris Mini Deb Conf, very nice. And we probably want, want to do that again because it's it's so useful. There's where we figure out how the upgrade stuff was going to work. So that's uh, that's a lot of stuff. And now there's stuff we still need to do on the interpreter side. Uh, 
I had an idea to make RubyGens integration, uh, make RubyGens installed to the home directory by default if the user doesn't have permission to write to slash var slash lib slash gems whatever. So that's we, we will we will go back to these items I just mentioned them very quick. We need to figure out uh, what to do for multi arch. So the dependency chains that mix uh, arch all and arch any packages we have to have the right flags there to make sure it works with multi arch. Uh, we need to check upstream support for Ruby 2.1 and make sure we are good for the lifetime of Jesse. Uh, I would like to have feedback on an experiment I posted on the mailing list a few days ago called Ruby Standalone, which is a way of installing the Ruby interpreter from Debian and being able to use that without any of the Debian package. So if if your upstream uh, has versions that are incompatible, I mean, if your upstream project like you want to install a web application like GitLab or uh, this course, and then the you cannot satisfy the dependency with Debian. You can just use that thing to use the interpreter from Debian, but the package from Ruby Gems. Uh, we need to that decide whether we want to backport Ruby 2.1 to Wizy, or if in general we want to keep backports of the latest interpreter for the latest table, and how to do that without breaking everything. Uh, and if it's useful, if people want to have a uh, backport of the latest uh, head commit for upstream interpreter. Uh, there are also uh, to-do items on the alternative interpreters. I didn't see much movement on this front, to be honest. So I don't know if it's gonna, something's going to happen there. What's the status? I, my impression is that uh, Rubinho seems to be compatible with most things, but it ju just didn't caught up. Maybe because MRI is doing much better in with the non-Japanese developers, so people are getting <coughs> inside the core team more easily, and it seems to be working. I, even people who work on Rubinho are there, so. My, and then there's a something like Rubinus 2.0 that's like changing everything and like being handled like an experiment. So uh, I was working on the Rubinus packaging. And I, I, to be honest, I'm not very interested anymore. And for JRuby, I have no idea. Okay, uh, about finishing the transition to new Ruby policy, we have to. Um, Finish the last few packages. I think it's, it's very, uh, very few, right? Yeah. Uh, mostly non-team packages that haven't transitioned. Yeah. Uh, I think that's mostly because we don't have uh, real written policy documentation. So okay. We find people to commit mm -hmm. to this. Um, yeah. So there are then some lib Ruby packages. And that brings us to the next point, which is updating Ruby policy package. I mean, uh, in, in the in the context of the auto package test uh, development, we ha we that specification is going to move to the Debian policy. And also, I think we should probably do the same and maintain all this, like the pill policy is already there, so we should probably do that as well. And on the packaging side, a couple of, uh, yeah, we have to like the fake auto package test integration to make sure we can have auto package test support even before uploading the 500 source package we maintain. Uh, there's a lot of bugs to fix on Gentle Dead and most of them are good entry points for people wanting to start contributing. So most of the stuff is not hard. Uh, there's to do items in the Git repository is probably uh, very outdated. And also, we need a still a solution for automatically build and ship developer docs. I think uh, Pear was working on that, and I, I don't, I'm not sure on the status. On the coordination, uh, organizing a periodic 
a periodic string. So Cedric added last night a note here. If you want to do nec the next one close to the dev conf UK or the mini dev conf UK or Fosden. And code review. I'm not sure yeah, what I this means. That. And, um, there have been some discussions around that conf here that they should use for code review. Um, and I see that on Hacktrue Access list, we regularly do some sort of code review because we have many people in the team that can't upload themselves. Mm -hmm. And the question is um, would any tool like Garrett to help us do that? Mm -hmm. um, no, I personally don't do any code reviews on Hacktrue Access. Um, but the people have been good on that. Using the that work, it doesn't work so well for the packaging because while well, the package is also branching and stuff. Mm. <coughs> I'm not sure it's the best tool, or maybe we can use it just to document exactly all we need to use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Still didn't have anyone doing that. Um, and a bunch of things about documentation. Basically, we suck at maintaining documentation, so we have. Yeah. So, okay, so yeah, we went over the list. Now we can. Do we discuss the easy things first mm -hmm. or the yeah. hard things right. first? There was uh, a little bit of feedback from IRC. Uh, to you, I think, I don't know how to say that. It's it's really said cool. that uh, Rubinius uh, is not a master package because it was split into many gems. Um, right, there yeah. was that. So, then somebody also asked the data to speak closer to a microphone. Yeah. And he replied on IRC. And maybe, H maybe we can G G grab said that a sprint uh, before the Jesse freeze would be cool. Yeah, before the Jesse freeze, that's, yeah, that's a little shortcut. difficult. <coughs> the the mini dev conf UK is in October, November, November. 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 So that's October. right on top of the freeze. Yeah. So yeah, about the about the sprint, you maybe maybe we can discuss that first. Uh, sorry, not sure at all. Uh, it is. It is. We just don't have speakers, yeah, but okay. it's on for the stream. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm wondering if it sends the right message to organize a sprint uh, in November if we freeze uh, in early November. Yeah. It might be better to. Uh, I'm not sure the status of the Ruby team regarding RC bugs. Uh, but here, it's fine. It's fine. Oh yeah. I, I, I don't think we're too bad. Even the size. The one thing we're actually missing. So for our bugs, mostly uh, the one thing we are missing is like grades, mm -hmm. um, and it's not on the list. Uh, can you comment on the state of it? Yes. So Rails four is on on stable and testing. Uh, we are just missing one package in the new queue to make sure the smoke test for Rails pass back to back. So. And it, it's not even a, a very important package, it's like a documentation generator, but uh, it's required by the default gem file that Rails creates. Uh, I should probably talk to Paul <laughs> here to see if he wants to do more new processing <laughs> during DevCon. Uh, yeah, but then, quite yeah, I know. You, you can just, if, if you need a specific package to go through new, you can just go to, to him and explain why it's important that this one goes through new. Okay. Yeah, so when that's in, then Rails 4 is, the full stack is completely fine. Uh, another good news, last night I was able to make uh, Redmine work with Rails 4. So we need, uh, uh, I think, three or four packages to in the new queue, and new upstream versions of all the three or four packages, but Redmine is working. So, yeah, then we, we, I think ReadyMind is the main dependency, Rails dependency we have, reverse dependency. So we, we should be fine by the time of, of the freeze. Yeah, 
so then for the sprint, but then also for mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think we have to look at the maintenance dashboard, see the volume of RC bugs. And if there's lots of them, maybe it's useful to have a sprint, e even if it's close to the sprint, to the freeze. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering if we couldn't just do some kind of uh, automated uh, religions to dev uh, websites uh, archive. I think that there's one for R packages mm -hmm. uh, that converts uh, from R to uh, dev packages. And maybe that's something that would work quite well with the current state of gem to dev. So generate dev files with all gems. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, some of them will be broken. We require manual tuning from the sysadmin. That would be a nice way to uh, enforce or to, to push them to sysadmins. Uh, and I can realize that uh, it's, a, it's a valid alternative compared to the gems. So, just the end. Yeah, there was something doing that in the past, but I, 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 I think Gunnar did a blog post on something related to that. I, I think it was some company that yes. had a service for that, but I, I think they disappeared. They disappeared. They, yeah, yeah, you're right. They were trying to do the whole, uh, uh, well, it was not yet uh, Ruby Gems archive, it was the previous iteration of it. Mm. But, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe six years ago or so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think we. Yeah, that's something that seems to be doable. Got the microphone again. If that works, does that work, Kurt? Yes. I can't hear anything. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Everybody get it too. Hey, you may keep it. Stay here. No, no, <laughs> I'm doing salt in that room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Well, uh, no. Thinking about this uh, idea by Lucas, if we start doing a, a automated <coughs> gem to them website, it may even be set in a, a, a deb, a, a, like a, in a, a repository way, as an apt repository. Yes, of so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe on demand, you, you request one gem and then it, it gets other. Well, that's yeah, uh, actually I think in the, uh, the Ruby gems are kind of pretty big. We don't want. To there's loads of crap there also. And also, you know, different versions. Yeah, we don't want to convert all of the, the Ruby gems and also, uh, you know, at different applications are going to have, uh, you know, many different um, re version requirements for Ruby gems. So we would al also have to mm. maybe do all of the versions, you know, so that gets even worse. And also, I don't know, if how frequently we should like look at everything and maybe throw some packages out of the archive because dead of stream or superseded or not recommended. Because I think we have a bunch of like leaf libraries that actually we could just ditch. Uh, probably is to, yeah, maybe uh, after, after the freeze or so. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's there's a that's a general problem. Does anybody know how other teams do that? I mean, spotting that up scenes, just some someone doing the work all the time. Or <coughs> I don't think there's a non-manual way to do that. Yeah, well, there are several metrics we could uh, take to help us uh, decide on that. For example, looking at uh, popcorn scores, uh, uh, crossing that with last upload times. I mean, that that can start pointing to, well, something may be unmaintained, not surely.
show should we go to the list yeah. now okay uh, so James tau to home directory if the user is not root so the only uh, we and Christian discussed this and the only problem that seems to happen I mean, it's not really a problem but it's an issue is that it makes us different from other OS's so Fedora does that by default since some time already so if you're not root and you do jam install it will install to your home directory by default but uh, can you explain what happens with bundler yeah. so the main concern is basically bundler which um, on other OS's except like Fedora probably um, notices that you're not root and if you cannot write into the system gem directory it will spawn sudo for you and it will see if that works and if it doesn't then it will give you a nice error message that says yeah you need to install into a non-system location and you need to do that and that um, I think uh, most of the like Rails tutorials and whatever on the internet basically assume that you can just run bundle install something and then you will end up with the gems in the system location and the gem stop, uh, the bin stop files in user local bin so everything will be in your path afterwards and I think that would break uh, I've always used bundler with the uh, I think it's like vendor flag the one that puts every uh, dependencies bundle needed in a single repository can we make that the default and problem solved I mean the idea that these things called sudo is bit, I, I hate it so yeah that's actually a fair point uh, I agree that it's um, you know um, it should, it in an ideal world, it shouldn't run sudo, but um, you know, it's the way now. Didn't uh, they didn't they add this sudo thing exactly because of us? Uh, no, I think because they if if every, everyone else uses their RVM, they install to the home directory anyway, and we are probably the, the only <laughs> the ones pushing for <laughs> installing to the system location. By I know on um, at least OS X, um, it will default to the system location if you do not use RVM. Okay. Now I don't know how many people use Bundle without using RVM. So if you have feedback on that. I mean, this um, also plays into the question if we, should we have Ruby standalone, should we have uh, Ruby backports? Because if nobody is ever using the system interpreter for doing development work, then we can just stop caring for these things. So what are you using? So my development platform is Debian. And I'm, I'm producing software that I want to get packaged in Debian because I don't want to have to juggle with you know, updating versions all the time. Uh, so I'm, I'm, if I can, I'm actually trying to, uh, to target stable. And if I can't, I'll target packages that I think I can backport. Um, that's a very specific position of someone doing a, a bit of upstream Ruby development, but it's also mainly a deep developer. Uh, but I believe it is also <laughs> uh, a way to not have so many headaches. Yeah, that, that's what I do too. Um, I don't think it's useful to backport the interpreter. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I um, using uh, I, I don't know using so I, I really don't like RVM also because meh but the the bundler with the the vendor uh, directory is like a mini RVM and it's like like building a shitload of ton like of stuff in in your home 
it was like a reasonable compromise to me. I don't know other experience. Wh when you do that with Bundler, does it, if there are packages already installed system wide, does it duplicate those packages in your? Okay. Okay, so uh, in our case for development machines, we sometimes use Ruby. If it's 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 possible, we take it from the operating system, from Debian or from CentOS. But there are plenty of applications uh, still not being fully supported by Ruby 2.1, for instance. That's why uh, very often we compile from scratch Ruby because it's not really difficult. And then we use Bundler. And we never use gems from uh, uh, operating system from Debian. We we always do it on the fly. And even in production, um, for every release, we uh, do <coughs> bundle install. Uh, so when we switch between the releases, it's really safe because if I change Ruby version, uh, Ruby gem version, and I release new version of application, I want to have the full set of gem gems in the application, in the new release of my application directory. And it means that if something breaks, I can really quickly switch back to the, uh, to the old release. Yeah. If I understand you right, you're not using our bundler then? Yeah. So in, in our case, uh, we have a Debian-only infrastructure, and we're using actually um, the Debian package right now and uh, plus a couple of patches for the um, garbage collector, which will be unnecessary in 2.1 as far as I understand. Mm. Uh, so we, uh, we're really trying to push the developers towards using as many system packages as possible, as many distribution packages as possible, but that's not always um, the case. They use Bundler. They have locks on specific game versions, which is something like inherently, almost inherently incompatible with the way we do versioning in Debian. Yeah, right. So I think that it's very, very difficult to provide uh, like packages that can satisfy everyone and get rid of Bundler. Uh, as far as the, the backport is concerned, um, I think it would ease transition to Jesse so that we could eventually uh, start switching to Ruby 2.1 before upgrading the whole system to Jesse and see that the application works. But I don't know if that would be reason enough uh, for the overhead of backporting mm -hmm. things. I mean, for us, it would be perfect because we could get rid of the uh, custom patches we have right now in place for the garbage collector because they're not needed in 2.1 anymore. Um, but I'm not sure how many people would actually use a Ruby interpreter from backports right uh, now. I mean, I could um, try the backport. I, I, I haven't seen what uh, actually is required to backport. I, I suppose we have to make it work with update alternatives and so on in order to be compatible with um, Wheezy versions right now. Um, I could invest some effort there. Okay. Yeah, our idea was to not integrate with Ruby alternatives at all and just create the binary is the 2.1 prefix suffix okay. and then if you want to use that by default you can just create scene links in user local bin because on Wheezy most of the binaries uh, most of the binaries still use user bin and ruby as shebang line so it's going to use whatever ruby you have on your path and since none of the ruby libraries on Wheezy will support ruby 2.1 then everything will, will explode for just your uh, in a better position because most binaries already use user being Ruby, so they will use whatever Ruby will say they should use. So the, the, the idea of the backport, if we do that, is to not provide in the path by default. In the path. So maybe we can provide some directory with the theme links already made that you can add to your path or call directly if you want. But we are not planning to integrate with how easy the auto with Ruby because that's going to break everything. Mm, yeah. So you said you always use uh, Ruby from source? Uh, depends. I mean, we use uh, uh, from scratch, or Bitmapping. Uh, Bitmapping is Ruby. 
but it, it's just built, everything is built from scratch. So we don't depend on the operating system. It's mostly because uh, we want to be independent on, um, we, we, may, we, we, we are running different applications, Ruby applications, and some of them, they still use Ruby 1.8, some of them 1.9, mm -hmm. etc. So it's just safer for us uh, for now. So for instance, what I would expect from the uh, from Debian or from Linux distribution is just to have a Ruby interpreter, like really well done and different versions so I can switch. And I don't care that much about Ruby gems, gems in, in general because I can always use them with bundler, right? And I don't know if other guys uh, use... But you uh, do care to have the interpreter from the OS? Uh, I mean, I if could possible. use it. I, if possible, yeah. I could use it, yeah. yeah. And in development, uh, I, try to, uh, I, try to, I try to do it. Because it's not one part is web development, other part is, I mean, we Ruby developers, we also build some tools uh, in Ruby. Mm -hmm. So I, I, w I want to have uh, Ruby in the system, from the system. Yeah, yeah so the, the idea of Ruby standalone is to be able to install Ruby from the OS, and then even if you have stuff like Vagrant or Redmine or anything else that's a Ruby application packaged by Debian, you can still use your application, and your application won't see any of the dependencies of those guys. Like Chef brings a lot a whole lot of dependencies. And then if you use Ruby standalone, it will use the interpreter on the system, but that interpreter will not see all the other libraries installed. So then you have a clean environment for applications. And that's that's something I would use myself if I have, for instance, to contribute to some upstream project that has completely crazy versions. Then I could use that because I, I don't want to be building Ruby from source every time and then just have a clean environment there and then use install whatever your upstream needs for me to write a patch. Okay. Um, just a final note. Um, when we started this, um, anyway where I work, we we're basically running a big Rails application. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our main business. So when we um, started some years ago, we were using Ruby Enterprise, which meant completely out of tree stuff. The fact that we now only have a single patch on top of the Debian package, which will also probably go away with 2.1, mm -hmm. I think is a very big success for Debian right now. And I mean, um, for us, I, I would like to be able to use only system packages. It's um, clear for us. For the security support, then, because there's no reason to do duplicate work, actually, mm -hmm. work yeah. actually, I would much prefer to invest my time in Debian rather than package and maintain things just for our own use. Yeah, that, that's what we try to do most of the time. So we, we already have Redmine, so everything that Redmine depends on is there. Uh, there's people uh, working on Diaspora, so I think Diaspora is quite close to finishing, so they have. 80 or 90 percent of the dependencies package, which, which is quite a lot because it was an absurd number of packages. And we have also people working on GitLab. I think GitLab should be at 60 percent or something. So everything that's in the dependency chain of those applications is already available. Plus the stuff that Chef needs, the Vagrant needs, the Puppet needs, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I think we are. Jess is going to be really nice. Um, I think we have five minutes left, is that correct? Yeah. Five minutes? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, uh, on that matter, uh, Chef, if anybody wants to use Chef, it would need your help. Um, the packages are, I think, very outdated and only unstable. So if you want to use Chef. I, I try to contact the maintainer again and again and again, like three or four times, no answer. Yeah, I think you need to just hijack them. Well, I think we need to remove the packet at some point. No, 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 no. I, I was chef. <laughs> wait, wait there. <laughs> <laughs> I was chef on Wheezy and it works just fine. So <laughs> we, we need to fix that. Okay. Uh,
Does anybody have comments on any of the other items on our list? Does anybody want to work on them? Especially on policy, documentation, um, gem to deb. Yeah, I think gem to deb is mostly very specific points that people just have to look at the BTS and choose bugs to work on. Uh, I think uh, we don't have to decide now on Sprint, but we can discuss over the mailing list. And code review, I think several other people are also work, uh, looking at that for that yeah. and other teams. So. And the, the plan for our aspect is to uh, wait after yes. Jesse for 3.0, right? Yes. going to be a, pain, a lot of pain. Yeah. But, but yeah. yeah. Um, but then, being, aspect being a development dependency, maybe we can just have the two versions there. And it's not ideal, but it's less pain than well, if we have a two package test on every package, at least we will know yep. what is broken, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. yeah. We can also, if you want, we can also try to do a rebuild, a mass, like a mass rebuild with a. We can try to do a mass rebuild of every package, depending on L spec, after upgrading, and see also how many breaks. Because we don't have a good estimate right now, right? Mm -hmm. No. No. Yeah, Luca told me that there was still money in the <laughs> Amazon thing that is used to do master yeah. build. So. We haven't chosen most of them yet, so it's expires at the end of the year. So if you need CPU for one year, it's okay. Okay. Just Maybe. Choose it. Where, where? Yeah, I think that we, we can upload our spec to experimental and then rebuild everything. I think we are... Is there any feedback from IRC? Yeah, there is some feedback on IRC to, uh, for our spec. Um, Caitlin says that... She? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that think so. Um, she has done uh, a lot of work for packaging our spec 3. Uh, and Cedric says <coughs> that he expects the master rebuild to basically um, say that 50% of packages will fail. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Jonas earlier said that he lost track on uh, packaging GitLab. So I guess uh, if you want to see GitLab, then it also needs your help. Uh, yeah. OK. I think we are one minute to go, so let's uh, close the session. I think we had very nice feedback. Uh, I don't think the notes reflect that, but then we can always watch the recording later and, and <laughs> taking the appropriate notes. Um, yeah, that's it. So thanks, everyone. And um, we are done. Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah.